You know the drill. We've all been involved in a conversation where someone's showing you a really cool trick and they tell you that it's from some book and you think, oh great, where can I get that book? Only to find out that it's out of print. Normally I don't talk about out of print books for that reason. I don't want to get you excited for a book only to tell you you can't have it. However, there is a ton of great magic that is out of print. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you my top 10 books that I wish someone would reprint. Along the way, please sound off in the comments below with whether you agree with some of my picks and what are books that I left off that you would prefer to see reprinted. We're gonna have to fly through this material, so buckle up and let's go. At number 10 on our list is probably one of the most famous magic periodicals ever published. It's in the public domain, so there's really no reason that someone couldn't reprint this and put it out there. You can get it as a digital copy right now, very inexpensively, but I would love to see someone put it back into that physical format that you can hold and flip through and smell. Just be together in the same space. I'm talking about Ted Anneman's The Jinx. I really don't have to tell you why this periodical is so important. Although it contains a lot of card material, one could say that this was a foundation for modern mentalism. Plus there's just so much other cool stuff. There's old business cards published in here, cocktail recipes, gossip, and of course, great magic. Ted Anneman had a way with words. He was concise, but you always understood what you needed to do. Almost all of the modern classics of mentalism that people perform to this day had their roots in something in the Jinx. If you have favorite tricks from the Jinx, sound off down below with what they are. Number nine on my list comes from a classic card magic author, one that I've discussed fairly recently. And this book helped me take the leap from a beginner magician to an intermediate card student. It's got tons of great card tricks, all from the fertile mind of one of Chicago's best. There's a healthy mix between tricks that can be done from a shuffle deck in use and how to stack a deck on the fly to items that require a minimal amount of setup but deliver a disproportionate effect to effort. I am talking about John Bannon's Dear Mr. Fantasy. I've reviewed this book in detail, so be sure to check out that review if you're interested in hard-hitting but easy-to-do card magic. By the way, my sources do tell me that this book is due to be republished probably in 2023, so stay tuned right here on Erudite Magic for more information. Number eight on this list of books that I wish would be republished is a Hermetic Press book, which you already know means that it's high quality. It is a mentalism book, although the author really did more mental magic and didn't care what you labeled it as long as the audience loved it. And that's probably one of the reasons that I love performing tricks from this book, because they're just so fun and you'll fool yourself with some of the devious methods involved. I'm talking about the late German mentalist, Ted Leslie and his book, Paramiracles. Highlights from this book include a couple of different envelopes that allow you to invisibly switch things out, including one item that allows the item to be switched out in the participant's hand. There's also some great ideas for card tricks where the participants are doing all the shuffling, all the handling of the deck. They can choose any card. Yes, the cards are all different and you're still able to tell them a thought of card or even predict it. I definitely hope that someday it will be reprinted so that you too can experience the wonder of Paramiracles. Coming in at number seven, there's an LNL classic, which I believe is now owned by Murphy's Magic, so I have hopes that they will reprint this back catalog if there's enough demand. I've talked about this book before from one of my favorite card creators. This author was an Ohio native known for his packet tricks. However, he also had a ton of great ideas with everything from trick decks to shuffle deck in use material. I'm talking about the card magic of Nick Trost. Nick published a ton of magic over a long period of time in the New Tops magazine, and then in the 90s, they culled all of his best material in between two covers and included an appendix of slights that really teaches you a ton of utilitarian moves that are easy to do. That's a hallmark of a Nick Trost book, is that all of the magic is easy to do, and even though it's not difficult, you'll be able to fool magicians and lay people alike with this material. I think it is such a great book and should be in almost every card magician's library. As we head towards the top five, number six on my list is a book that I actually don't own. I've never even read it, but I've always wanted a copy, and the likelihood is you have too. It's from a well-known mentalist, although it doesn't actually cover mentalism specifically. I'm talking about Darren Brown's Pure Effect. This book has been fetching very high prices in the secondary market for a long time, which is always a good reason to republish a book. But as Darren has gone on to great acclaim and potentially being one of the most entertaining 
mentalists and magicians of our lifetime. This book lays out his thinking so you can start to see the groundwork for what eventually became his persona on TV and in all these performances that we know and love. Selfishly, I'd just love to see this one reprinted because I'd like to get a copy myself. Starting the top five of this series of books that I wish were being republished is one of the Mac Daddies of all magic. This book is huge and was printed right around the time of World War II. I happen to have a copy that was published under the authority of the War Production Board. I'm talking about the Carl Jones produced and John Northern Hilliard written Greater Magic. Just looking at this, you can see how hefty of a book this is, and it covers all kinds of magic. It has been reprinted a couple of times, most recently and notably by Richard Kaufman. However, even that printing has sold out, and with good reason. There's so much great magic to learn between these pages. If you only ever had one book, albeit it's an older one, it would teach you almost everything you would need to know about magic. It's not really that rare of a book. In fact, I bought my copy on eBay, but I think it's an important book from a historical perspective and packs a ton of magic into a lot of pages. The great news is, if you've been waiting for this, it is being republished one more time with even more material, again, from Richard Kaufman. There've been some production delays, so I'm not sure exactly when this is coming out, but we eagerly look forward to when this one will be republished. Number four on my list is another mentalism book and again, another German mentalist. I have reviewed this book as one of the first reviews that I ever did on the channel. What makes it so exciting to me is that it's a fun book to read. There are literally little puzzles to solve throughout the book, as well as just being written in this zany, entertaining style. It was translated to English and published by my very good friends over at Vanishing Inc. I'm talking about Florian Severin's What Lies Inside. You will be inspired, you will be entertained, and you will be doing some of the magic published in this book. There's a ton of great thinking, especially about pre-show, probably one of the best write-ups I've ever seen. You can still download a free chapter of this book from Vanishing Inc.'s website, and I'll drop a link down in the description below so that you can check it out and write them an email to beg them to republish this. Number three on this list is another set of books that I don't own, and I really wish I would have pulled the trigger when it came out. That's a recurring theme, I think, throughout all of this episode. Even though I have some of these books that are out of print, I never want to make a decision out of fear. And if you can't afford something, you just can't afford it. I'm talking about the magic of Johnny Thompson. These books are quite pricey, and especially now in the secondhand market. But maybe I'll still end up with a copy someday. Who knows? Johnny was a legend in the world of magic, and from what I understand, knew a ton about magic, whether it was parlor, stage, stand-up, close-up, cards. It didn't matter. He was a clever thinker and an entertaining performer. These books debuted at, I believe, $250, so they were never cheap, but they were limited, and if you didn't get them at the time, you're going to spend a lot more to get them now. So I very much wish these could be republished as well because this is one of the few books that I really regret not purchasing. If you have them, I'd love to hear from you about what some of your favorite items are from his writing. At number two, we have another author and artist who is currently deceased. I'm talking about one of the fathers of very modern mentalism. And indeed, this is one of the first serious mentalist books I ever purchased and is still one of the most densely packed books full of practical material that you can and will perform. I'm talking about The Artful Mentalism of Bob Cassidy. This is put out by H&R Books and is really a collection of Bob Cassidy's older material that was accumulated together. There are a ton of classics in here that I perform, Fourth Dimensional Telepathy, as taught in this book, The Name and Place Routine. Ultimately, if you look at any website that has downloads of Bob Cassidy, you'll see that most of them were published at some point in this book. There's a ton of great ideas from one of mentalism's greatest thinkers. I hope someday H&R will see fit to republish this for a whole new generation of aspiring mentalists. Number one on my list is a set of books. It's not just one book. Fortunately, I do think these will be reprinted, and they contain probably more magic than almost any other set of books that I own. I was fortunate to have the cash sitting around when they came out, and if they ever are republished, I certainly hope you won't hesitate to jump on them because there's 
just a ton of great material. This creator is one of the most prolific in the modern era and has done magic with all kinds of objects. Mentalism, playing cards, spoons, rings, rubber bands, paper clips. I'm talking about Canada's own Jay Sankey. The collection is the definitive Sankey, again, put out by Vanishing Ink. You'll learn all kinds of classic tricks, everything from cards, a triumph that's really easy to do called Back in Time, the balloon trick that David Copperfield performed on his international magic special. You'll learn a utility switch to either switch out billets or playing cards, as well as many, many, many other tricks. The really cool part about these books is that all of the tricks are labeled in terms of their difficulty, plus you have recommendations from magicians all over the world who will tell you what their favorites are from this so you won't miss out on anything really, really cool. The main reason books aren't republished is because there just isn't enough demand to justify going through a giant print run. So if there are books that you heard in this list that you would love to see reprinted, sound off down below so that we can start some momentum and tell magic publishers exactly how much we value books. As always, my friends, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, keep reading.